going to make the next shoe in the series for Calgary. We're going to make an aluminium front shoe, lateral extension. It's for a right front, so it's making sure that we put the lateral extension on the correct side. It's double fullered on the outside, so we need to look at the picture to see where the features are. We've got a broad heel, and we're starting with a relatively narrow piece of bar stock. When I look at the picture, I see a wide web shoe. So I'm gonna to have to spread the 25 by 12. I'm gonna mark it a quarter of an inch off center, six millimeters off center. Then I'm gonna heat the whole thing, both ends. I'll bring it out, I'll forge the outside heel, and I'll forge the inside heel. Before I bend the toe, I'll spread the toe. I'll, I'll widen the material, and then I'll bend the toe, then flatten the branches. There'll be one heat, and by the time the, the first heat is finished, we should have the fullering mark. Then I'll cool the shoe out, and just put it down on the table on the side at the competition. And whenever I get chance, I'll work it totally cold. And you'll find the fullering will come in nicer cold. Six mil off center, quarter of an inch off center. With aluminum, I don't put it down into the fire. I'll put it onto the top of the fire. I'll put it on with the, heel, the outside heel away from me and I'll let the heat come towards center. And I'll heat one end and then I'll flip it and heat the other end. So I'll hardly put the center of the shoe in the fire. I'll just let the heat travel to the center. To tell if it's hot, I'll use a piece of wood, normally the edge of my wire brush. And if that leaves a black scorch mark, that will tell you it's ready. I'll just bring it out, wire brush it a bit. And that scorch mark is telling me that that end is ready. So now I'll put the inside in but I don't push it down into the fire because it'll melt really quickly. Okay, I'll start with my outside heel. Pulling the corners back so I don't have to bump it up. I'm pushing the material back. I'm getting the upsetting just by the way I'm forging it. And the better I finish this heel, the better my finished product. What I'll do now, I'll box it off a bit to where I can visualize the first nail hole is. So basically what I end up with is lateral extension and the bearing surface of the shoe. And the bearing surface of the shoe will pretty much, by the time I come back to it, will be flattened to the normal width. And I'll turn it. I'll do the inside heel. So that a normal type inside heel. And I'll take a lot of time doing this because this is the finish. Okay, now I've got my heels done. Now I'll flatten the inside, flatten the toe. Now, thin the inside edge of the shoe, leaving the outside edge almost full thickness. And I'm trying to pull it to widen the shoe. Then nice toe bend. Overlapping blows, get a really nice flow in the toe bend. Don't rush it. I'll just give my heels a final clean up. And I'll bend the branch. Bend the inside branch. Now I'll flatten my shoe down to 10 mil, down to 3 eighths. Now we'll really start to spread the shoe. Really thinking about trying to keep a finish on it the whole time. I'll work the edges. I'll get my shoe to about the right shape. And now I'll start marking the fullering. The outside fullering comes around to the, about the widest point. That's where the nail hole's gonna go. And then the, the full ring for the extension come up to the second nail hole and full it around to the outside and then have a full stop at the end. What I do is I visualize the distance because this shoe's boxed, lateral extension boxed off. So I'm just gonna visualize 
And as I come around the corner, this full ring starts to come in a little. It stops around the widest point. And then I won't come up to the second nail hole with this one. I'll leave it a bit short because I can always bring it up a little bit more at the end. And now I'll come around. I'm aiming for the middle of the heel with a check. Okay. Now full of the inside branch. Following starts right at the end of the heel. Don't get this one quite so coarse. But it doesn't have an extension there. But we don't want coarse nail holes in our inside branch. Now I'll take my fuller in about halfway. Get a grease on it. And we've got our full ring done there, about halfway through. Now I'll hem up the inside. I didn't need to hem up the outside because the full ring was so coarse. But with the inside now, I'll hem it up, knock the edge off. I'll follow it halfway through. Right now, I've got the shoe mapped out. You can see there where we are. Now I'm going to cool the shoe out totally, put it in the bucket, make it totally cold. So from now on, the rest of my work, till the clipping stage, is perfectly cold. I can pick it up at any time and continue. Where we've fullered it, it's got a little bit of uneven edge. It's got like some waves in the surface. I can either hit it from the back and try and push it through. Or what I'll do is, because I can hit fairly flat, I'll hit it on the ground surface and get a really flat surface coming. Flatten it from the back. Put a bit more boxing on it. And because this metal's cold, you don't get the same amount of rippling of the material. And we're going to put a lot of effort into our flattening because we're not going to be able to rasp it. Lots of overlapping blows to make it flat. One more time with the fuller. Now I'll start putting our nail holes in. Put my toenails in balance. They're a bit closer to the toe than normal. Put my third nail hole in, and one in the middle. When we're finished, that's what the outer crease will fit to. We'll level it again. And with the material being cold, you'll see it gets quite a nice smooth shine on it. Up to my second nail hole with my four in there. Punch nail holes to the bottom. Now when I use my Pritchel, I'm going to punch onto the anvil before I put over the hardy hole. And I listen for the sound and then I go over, no pitch on the outside. Now before I go on, I'll back punch these because I don't want to close them up. With aluminum, they tend to close up very easily. You'll be small again. I'll back punch them. I'll level my nail holes. Into my nail holes, clean them up. Fit a concave six. So we want to have our punches set up for concave sixes. Through the nail holes for the last time.
Now we're not allowed to rasp, but little bits of debris on the back of the nail holes. The best ways of getting it off is with a wire brush. My next step is to heat it, because I want some heat to put the clip on. I'll heat it, I'll roll my toe first, that broken edge, and then I'll clip it with a cross beam hammer. It goes from a second nail hole, around to the second nail hole. It's quite a sleep, steep slope, and I'm using this to widen my toe just a little bit, because I didn't bump it. And this gives me the opportunity to just add a bit of breadth to the width of the toe. I want a strong clip. This is aluminum. Normal clipping process, but I hold a little bit more over. So I end up with a bit thicker material. So I want a thick clip. I don't want a weak clip on the aluminum. Level the back of the toe. I'll run my hammer around just to break the edge to seat it out because it's a wide web shoe. So even though it doesn't show seating on the picture, I'll do it. It's good shoemaking practice. Just gonna set my clip. Box it one more last time and get a nice shine on the boxing. The shoes wire brush up better if they've got a little bit of heat in them. So I'll just take a little over, all over heat. I'll start it with the coarse wire brush and finish it with a fine wire brush. Don't push too hard. It's letting the brush slide over the surface. Then I'll go to the fine wire brush. I'll get down in the, the crease. I just put a smoother finish on it. What I've done now, I've cut some nails, concave sixes, and I'll put them in the nail hole. And I'll just tap them into position. And that will get them to sit really well. And by cutting them off short, they come out easily. Got the shoe finished. We got the features about the same as the picture. We got the same, same style of outside heel, same style of inside heel. Fullered right back to the heel, almost up to the toe. Inside, outside branch from the toe, just past the quarters. And then from the second nail hole to the end of the heel. Reasonably good finish on it. And we got the rolled edge. Here we can see the boxing. So that's why these nail holes need to be so coarse because the boxing is moving the shoe into here.